Good morning, everybody. Um, I am not in my bathroom today for Skincare Live Q&A because I am slightly doing a little self-isolation whilst, because um, I went to stay with my sister for a few days and Charles um, said, can you do a test before to make sure you're okay? So I've done, I did a test Monday morning first thing, but in the meantime, I've been staying upstairs. Um, it's just for Charles, really. There is no, obviously, um, there is a corridor between where I was, but um, I just want to be careful. So um, hold on one second. Okay, I just finished exercise. I'm rather, and I've got all my products here. I mean, I have, it's like, it's like a monsoon has hit my desk. So we just got like, we just, um, I have to be careful. I don't show you anything you shouldn't be seeing because I always get a bit nervous that way because you've got beady eyes and there's a lot, funnily enough, sitting. There's a lot you're not allowed to see yet, sitting um, underneath the um, thing I put my stuff on. Um, so, so beady eyes won't be able to see. Um, and I also thought today I would, um, I've been using some tools for ages and I thought I'd just share with you. I've got my little toolbox here. I'm so organized. I've got these Muji drawers. Look how good they are. Really great. Oh no, they aren't the ones on, they aren't the ones on the wheel. So I can't pull them out. But in the top one, I have all my toolkit big toolkit but I love a tool and I just I think oh yes I was also sent this headband so why don't we just I haven't worn a headband since 1983 but let's just put that on this is by S. Susanna <laughs> sent me this headband she actually sent me I'll tell you what she did this is a sidetrack from skincare but it's so bloody funny um because I just don't wear them um Maybe it's because I've just done so much with her recently and she said, oh, Tweeny, I've got some things. Oh my God, I've lost the headband. How many of you can identify with, well, you might, some of you might wear headbands, but I just find I love the headband and I now only wear them if I'm doing skincare, but it was like into my past life. So I thought, oh, that was the blue dress she made for me. That's that fabric. In fact, that's a very nice colour, isn't it? I just couldn't wear it out. It's just so... I mean, a headband is the most unsexy thing a woman can wear. Not that I dress every day to be sexy, but I just... I have this girlfriend of mine who is the most lovely German woman, and she has... She's the most elegant, beautiful woman. And she has this very little thin headband, and she, she puts it on sometimes. And, and she's got short blonde hair. And whenever she puts it on, she looks like the businesswoman that she also is. But I always say, Catherine, what? I don't know, your headband. And we take it off and I mess up her hair and she's just, she's so gorgeous. And I just see, it makes her prim. I hope you don't watch this, Catherine, but it does, it makes you prim, I'm gonna say it. Okay, and then look, do we remember the green suit? She made a headband, imagine. Imagine if I wore the jacket and the suit together. It's the thought that counts. And then we have this turban number here which feels more skin carry, but I kind of want a nice color. If she'd done that in the blue, if she'd done that in the blue of the hundreds of here, we've got lilac. <sighs> we've got lilac. I feel that is slightly Anne Berlin, but the wrong color. So I'm gonna go back to blue sequin. You can't really go wrong with the sequin. Good color, like to, it to be the color for my eyes. Oh, holds my head back and perfect for doing tools. So let's go back now and we'll start with tools. But let me just say, Good morning, as I drink my hot water and lemon. Um, I know it's funny, it's funny the random places we go, but bloody headbands, hey? Um, because a part of us wants to still be, how many of you still want to slightly be Alice in Wonderland? I've got Hannah here. Hannah, say hi. Hello, everyone. There's Hannah. Hannah, do you, Hannah is in her 20s. Do you wear a headband, darling? I don't, I wear like really bad headbands. You what? I really don't do headbands. No, I know, I just think, yeah. Um, can I just say, I so enjoy getting my hair done. I had done really good colour at home. And Greg had also cut, and cut my hair recently. So it was just, and when I was at the hairdresser, I'll tell you what she did, because it is going to go really blonde, is I just said, just put in a few highlights. So she put them in and I went to get my hair blow dried and suddenly I was blonde. And I went, Shannon, I'm blonde. Like, 
really contrasting scary for me because I remember when I was last blonde it washed out my face so then I went back to the head wash halfway through a blow dry had it all change I mean you know when you kind of think have I got the will to live to spend do I remember how long it took at the bloody hairdresser but you get on with stuff so you know I got a caught up with my emails and things and anyway she put a toner on it was fine um I put push it too far back try bring it forward all right so let me just tell you the art of the headband so you think I should wear it like that I mean that to me is even worse I don't know. Like that? No. Like that? L I'll just be Anne Berlin for now. There, I'm sure there's an art, and I'm sure some people, not since 2000, says Jane, a pearl head band from Neiman Marcus. No idea what happened to it. Ironic, as I spent a fortune on it. So true, I know that one. My mum always has her hair bands matching her suits. Does she really? Yolanda, that is hilarious. Kind of adorable. Better tell Marianne that Trini says no headbands makes you look prim. Yeah. Bloody headbands, all right. Bloody headbands, all right. You pushed it too far back. I, oh, is everyone telling I pushed it too far back? Anyway, should we get on to tools? Is that not more interesting than tools? But anyway, sunglasses, your headbands. Erica, I, I hear that. Um, hello, good morning, everybody. You hate waste time in the hairdresser. I know. It's like, you just think to yourself, really? So I know we've done tools a bit, but we keep coming back to them. And I just want to really discuss the importance in my life of tools. You all know how much I love a microneedle and I have done separate films on microneedles because I think what a microneedle does is it just penetrates the product a little bit deeper and I think you need to build up and I think you need to take it easy and I think when you start microneedling maybe you need to start with if you have strong products, products that aren't so strong. But I think it does two things. I think it creates a channel for product to go deeper and I think it also activates that kind of fight or flight of collagen so like when it's being attacked it starts making itself if you're in your thir late 30s and above because up to sort of 24 we're making collagen hannah pumping with collagen who's um doing questions for us and um when you get to sort of premenopausal or menopausal that's kind of that's time's gone so you need things that stimulate it and many different things stimulate collagens but one of them to me definitely is microneedling and I share that with a few dermatologists who I adore who also kind of believe in it strongly but I think it has to be done carefully and if you want to know how to microneedle I've done lots of films on it but there is one on trinilondon.com forward slash the blog and I talk about the feathering I talk about starting with uh, 0 0.2 then go to 0 0.3 then 0 0.5 just gently never just go mad at it okay never go mad at it all right microneedles I clean either with the microneedle dermal cleaning product or I do um, surgical spirit. Uh, so that's it. Uh, Jacqueline, I'd rather go to the dentist than the hairdresser. In the hairdresser, you lose hours of your life. It's so true. But I do get things done. Like I got 100 emails done um, at the hairdresser. I've read that some dermatologists say it's not correct to assume that active ingredients get deeper. Um, I would say I disagree. Only in so much that there are clinical trials that have shown that if you, you know, create a channel product will go in further. So I do believe that. And all I know is from my perspective, I'm 56, I do Botox, I've done Profilo in the past. And that daily maintenance, that daily, um, you know, massaging the skin, I use, I've been, I've going back to been using the high use so often. And I was watching actually her do them. But I'm doing this every morning when I went away, this was the tool I took just that blood stimulation. So that to me is about blood stimulation. Then I went back the other day, something I'd forgotten about, which I love, is the dermal roller, which I was using. This is like a, it's from Jean Philbert, it's just this roller. And I kind of used to use this every single day and it would make my skin red. And what's good is it kind of stimulates your blood flow. So to me, blood flow is such an important part of a skincare routine. I nearly want women who I feel have tired, dull skin to slap themselves a bit. Because just getting the oxygenation, blood comes around, whooshing around underneath your dermis, and it oxygenates your skin, pumps it out. You know when you've exercised and you get that kind of, it's red, but it's pumped your skin, and it's plumped and pumped, and it feels like it's alive. It feels so alive. So that's what this does to me. It doesn't penetrate, um, it just stimulates and it gives some 
little bit of hello, I'm back, how are you? And then on my lips, I do believe you all talk about how big my lips are. And, and if you look at the family, if you look at the family, you know that it's kind of hereditary. My brother, my half brother, especially has huge lips. But I do stimulate my lips. And I used to do forever this on my lips like this. To such an extent that actually I, I used to get a little bruising. But I think we talk so much, well, I talk so much, and we've got that tightness around our mouth. And we, the more we talk, the, the drier we get, so do we drink enough water. And I just think this gets oxygen back in. So I love it. Jean Philbert on Amazon, I think. It's about 30 quid. But, um, yeah, I love it. Just love it. There we go. There we go. Yes. Okay. That was tool number two. Tool number three is this. I don't know where it's from. I can't remember. But it's different from... I think I prefer the high U because I feel that my hands are in control of the movement. Okay? I just feel my hands are in control of the movement. So I do love that. And I've done a few massage techniques on this. This is all about lymphatic. Sort of start here. Open up those lymphatic channels. I've said this to you so often, ladies. I'm... I really apologize, apologize if I'm repeating myself. And then at the back, open up that back channel. Then open up these channels. These are great channels to open. These are where your lymph nodes just sit blocked. You know, if you sleep on your side a lot, they can be blocked. If you don't do much exercise, they can be blocked. But just, you know, when I do this properly, and then I start to do that release, I feel, I know this sounds absolutely torturously mad, but I feel my lymph moving around my face in the most subtle, subtle way. I don't want to freak you out, okay? But I just feel that there's some stimulation going on there. And if I really just be quiet for a second. It might be psychosomatic. just feel movement under, tiny movement under, but that's so good for you. So whether it's a high you, or whether it's something else, this is, lots of companies do this, so this is like a moonbeam roller, and there's one for the eye, you know, you go back and forth, it's quite cooling, you could keep it in the fridge and just have that coldness, which I think would be really good if somebody has a bag and an overhang. They aren't that expensive, these, um, and it's a nice feeling. Just that stimulation there, the under eye, the above eye area is an area where, you know, I notice when I'm very tired, like last week, or no, the week before last, my eyelids were doing that again, you know, because I was tired, I was dehydrated, and I had a heaviness around my eyes. And when I was away, I did a lot of the high you and just did this stimulation of that upper eyelid because that upper eyelid gets lost. I've said this and I'll say it every single time I do one. Put the cream there that you put on your face. Do the little microneedle incredibly lightly. Do a little dermal rolling really lightly, but just keep it stimulated. Otherwise it becomes, you know, you wake up age 40, 50, 60, and it won't have kept up with the rest of your face because we never remember. Okay. All right, let's do some questions, Hannah. Philippa has asked what serum should you use after microneedling? What serum? It depends so much, Philippa, on what your issues are. So I think if your skin is dull and needs brightening, you know, you might want to consider vitamin C. If you think that you're losing, you know, plumpness, you might want to do a sort of collagen -y one or a peptide -y serum or something that just plumps your skin. Hyaluronic you could do, but then you want to put something on top over. Um, and if you think it's sort of, you, you know, it's fine lines and wrinkles, I do at night do a little gentle... Um, high, um, microneedling, then I might do an acid. So let's say you're congested, your skin is congested, consider a really good exfoliating. So I might do, let me just find, because I've got all the things here, so we might as well use them. Some exfoliating acid. So I would do, uh, I like January Labs a lot, it's not too strong, and you could do that afterwards, and it just really cleans out the pore. You know I love Jane Shrivener as a little exfoliating toner. It just gives that double extra triple cleansing moment so i think that works well um yes next question esther has asked if you would recommend microneedling for everyone or just for people with skin problems 
you know, um, I think even if you have the most amazing skin, sometimes, like Susanna called me, you know, she always calls me in a panic, like a few months ago, and she went, I need an eye cream, I need this. Or we think, she said, my skin's really dry, I need a really good moisturizer. So I go and say to her, um, darling, do you need moisturizing your skin or do you actually need to exfoliate the dead skin cells? So it's like when you go to the hairdresser, you might say, I don't want my hair to look so red. And the hairdresser looks at your hair and thinks it's not red at all. So it's very subjective. And what you think you might need for your skin might not be what your skin needs. So if you tell me, oh my, I really need a good moisturizer, I'm sitting there in the back thinking, well, are you exfoliating enough? Or are dead skin cells sitting on the surface of your skin and you're not getting them off with an exfoliating acid and it's not about the moisturizer. So that's why it's quite difficult for me to suggest what serums you should use and what products you should use. I can tell you some great moisturizers, some great, um, you know, I do this Fab Four, so I do a, a low, mid, high and higher um, products in every category. And I do those generally on a Sunday, but you can catch them on um, Instagram and on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, next question, Hannah. Natalia has asked, how regularly should you microneedle and how long for? I mean, I think you've got to build up. So I started microneedling and I did it just at my derm and I did a strong needle and she did an acid peel um, afterwards. So that was like the first time, no, even, was that the first time I had it? Because I've done it for about 10 years. So I think I did have something like that. And then I thought, can I do this at home? And then I asked her and she ordered me one off Amazon that was like a 0 0.3. So I used that for a little bit and I used it once a week. And then I kind of thought, I'm seeing a benefit. I'm feeling a benefit. And it's very good as well if you have, I have acne scarring here and it was really helping. Um, any good dermatologist will say, actually, if you have bad acne scarring, just breaking down gently that scar tissue with some microneedling is quite good. So then I built up now, I do twice a week and I do a 0 0.5 needle. But that's taken me, you know, I've been doing it for 10 years. I would never do a one needle at home. It's really, to me, something that should be left to a dermatologist, one and two needles. Um, because I just think you can very easily scratch your skin too much. So you have to be careful. Um, and, um, yeah. Okay. Um, next one. What is the difference between dry and dehydrated skin and how should we treat both? Well, dehydrated skin means that there's a loss of water in your skin. So there's two ways you deal with that. One is that you um, drink lots of water um, and try and get plumpness from within. Um, there are certain products that are quite good like hyaluronic acids which retain water so if you're drinking lots of water and then you put hyaluronic acid on it will sort of absorb the water from the air actually and then it will so it's not very good in a desert and it will then um, hydrate your skin if you have dry skin generally that's because you're not exfoliating your skin enough and the dead skin that sort of sheds i know this sounds disgusting but the dead skin that sheds sits on your skin and you just feel that dry flakiness and that's just dead skin sitting there so for me when you have that you do need the first thing you need to think about is should i just get some kind of exfoliation going on into my routine which just sloshes it off makes the sort of ph balance of my skin good but allows me then that when i do get and pick up a nice barrier cream like a you know something with oils in it like 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 God, like uh, Beauty Pie Plantastic, which is a balm. You know, it's a really nice barrier cream. So you could put that on over, you've done your acid, and then you put that on. And you just create that nice instant sense of um, hydration for your skin, but with oils, okay? So dehydration, you need to treat with water in a way. If your skin is very dehydrated, you can put a moisturiser on it and it will look better. But if you're not dealing with what's going on inside, it will always come back. Okay, that's the main difference. Um, uh, yes. Faye, thanks for the recommendation of Gardner Wisdom Deep C. It seriously reduced my age spots. I can't believe it. It's really great, Deep C. It's a different form of vitamin C than... I don't know if I have it here. 
No, that's retinols. Any vitamin C's here? Um, Fab Four vitamin C. No, it's not there. It's not there. I might have used it all. But it's a um, easier form of vitamin C for people who have sensitive skin, and it works very well. I asked Medicaid this question via Insta, and they said you definitely can. Um, okay, I don't know what the question was. So, hey Trini, I have acne scars on my chin. It's microneedling. I really do. I really think it does. There's a few things. If you have really bad um, acne scars, there's a few things you can do. One is to do microneedling because it just breaks it down. Depends how old the acne scars are too. The other is like an azelaic acid because if your acne scars are um, physical, you know, as opposed to darker skin color like lila has a few where she's picked her spots and so she's got a few scars but their color discoloration azelaic acid really good but for actual unevenness microneedling you could do it two three times a week actually and then if they really really bug you you can do something called a co2 laser um which goes across i did one years ago it's very different now i did the really heavy intense one where um the downtime was about three weeks but it did soften my acne scarring. And what it does, if you imagine acne scarring has a hole like this, and they're sort of pitting, and then the laser comes along and does a few sort of resurfacing layers. So it sort of softens that hole. That's kind of how it works. So the CO2 light laser now um, is much better. And you can just do two or three crossings, and then you have a downtime maybe of three days. But it will help. Otherwise, on a smaller note, our Miracle Blur from Trini London, for me, is what I do every day. So anything where I have a deeper spot that I had picked years ago, I put the Miracle Blur on and it just fills it in. It's great. Instant relief. Um, yes, Hannah, another question, darling. Do you think castor oil works better than eyelash growth serum? Yes. Well, I've been doing, as you know, um, castor oil mixed with peptide serum so i've done the castor oil's not here but i've been using medicates peptide serum so this is my ritual at night i take like tiny bit it doesn't by the way this is it's not meant to be used around the eye area so i am misusing it but i don't find it stings my eyes but i just want to let you know that i wouldn't want to get medicate into trouble but peptides are peptides are growers Peptides, there's lots of different peptides. There's sort of Matrixyl 3000, that's kind of peptide, which is in the number seven new cream. Um, but they just are stimulating growers, is the only way I can describe it. There's very different types of peptides. So I put that on like that, and then I get castor oil, and I just do this and put it over. But if you just look at my lashes, and they really have grown. And I did, for the first month during lockdown, I did Revitalash. Got a bit, but not a huge amount. And then I started doing this combination and it was, I'm so happy. I just feel poor Edie. I'm never gonna go back to her again. Um, how to reduce pores. <coughs> I would say again, exfoliating acids. It's really what in the old fashioned world was the cl Clinique toner, but they can be softer now. And the acids that are put inside can be really restorative acids. They're sort of, glycolic and salicylic acids, and I don't particularly like those acids. I feel they're very, very harsh. There's a few new renditions of what salicylic acid used to be, but that's a very aggressive acid, but mandelic, malic, kojic for, um, um, for pigmentation. These are acids that can really work on your skin without being tremendously aggravating. And if you have large pores, generally there was a sense of using a glycolic acid, because that's a kind of acid, glycolic acid I think is based in sugar, but it will reduce pores the more you use an acid. Um, so if you don't have one in your life, consider it, because it's, I think everyone in their, in their routine should have it. Um, can I recommend a low cost face scrub? Um, I can, yes. You see, yeah. Face scrubs, exfoliating acids, vitamin C's, hyaluronic acids, all in one serums, hydrating masks, 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 all in one, body exfoliators, hydrating masks, cleanses, exfoliating scrubs. I knew they were somewhere. So if you want a granular exfoliation, and I used to only do granular exfoliation because I found it tremendously satisfying. But there's a few which I really like, and I think they are lovely products. Super Facialist you can get in Boots, and this is the um, Mr. M um, Madame Brennan, or I always get her name, Una Brennan. She's an Irish 
Um, she is an Irish um, dermatologist or facialist. But this is a vitamin C brighten, so it's like that. Sorry, I didn't do that very well, did I? There. I'm not Caroline. Um, and then you rub it in. And the texture is not, you know, it, it rubs in, releases a nice, slightly fake smell of vitamin C. Um, but it's not too big. There's no bad, by the way, scrub little um, things anymore. Nothing is allowed. And then I'll just do that. I'm going to really go for it. And you just feel the ting. You don't feel the tingling, vitamin C tingling, but just because I've done it quite a lot. And I got, look, I got a hot flannel like I'm in a facialist here in a Trini London. Look, I kept my hot flannel in our little um, Jubilee bag. Um, so very nice daily good scrub there. And my skin feels nicely soft. I also like um, the Hot Gloss Cleanser from Your Good Skin because it has, um, it usually comes with a muslin cloth, but I usually get my, my old Evlon muslin cloth. And when you put this on, sorry, let me do it so you can see it there. They had one, the yeah, there we go. Um, it's sort of just creamy, but then you take a muslin cloth, and I prefer this, by the way, to a flannel. I think a flannel's fine, I use flannels every day, but I like for exfoliation muslin, because flannels can be quite abrasive. So then I will get that, and I will just go in circular motions. So getting your cleanser to behave like an exfoliator, the way you can do it is to introduce a mus muslin cloth to the equation, and that's then free. Okay, and you just go round and round, Take whatever cleanser you have, and you can just go to John Lewis and buy some muslin, buy some muslin, buy a big like one meter and cut it into bits. You don't need to bloody hem it, but it's the muslin itself that I think is very, very good. So that is sort of what I call the free exfoliator. Um, Exuviance is a very nice brand. It's a kind of doctor's dermal brand. It's a little bit more expensive, but this is a triple microderm abrasion. So you know when we used to go and get crystal. Um, facials, people don't do them so much anymore, and that machine would go whoosh, 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 and it would put all these crystals into your skin, and not like woo-woo crystals, but crystal crystals. I should think it was banned, because I'm sure the ingredients were bad. But this is that in a tube. Sorry, let me just do it so you can see. This is that in a tube, that. There. There. Okay. Um, so this is more abrasive, like that but it's got a very nice base, so you can really work it into the skin. Like that. And when you do exfoliation, I think the most important thing is don't drag, you know, don't, don't like drag it, just sort of, you know, do little bits. And even if you have very slack skin, maybe hold a bit whilst you do another bit, because otherwise it is quite pulling on the skin. I think I have learned that in my old age. But this is a, this is really gonna get into everything, this one, exuviance. I know everything's back to front, but Hannah will write it down beautifully afterwards, won't you, my darling? Yeah. Yeah, she will. Okay. Um, and that's a little bit more, but those other ones are a good price. So, you know, I think there's always room in a routine for a granu granular exfoliation, ladies. I think there is. Are we ever going to get back tools? Do you want me to get back tools? Do you want me to get back tools? I just want to know because I could just continue here with all the questions or we could get back to tools. So do you exfoliate sensitive skin every day? I'd probably say if you feel your skin's very sensitive, you needn't do it every day. Um, but you could do a liquid exfoliation. Um, uh, I know, silly. When people do, don't worry about it. Um, best you get a really good skincare analysis before you start a detailed skincare routine. Yes, I think we can, you know, it's where you get the skincare analysis because I think there's a few people I've been to over the years and I thought, oh my God. Um, so you just got to pick knowledge, think, is this my skin? Listen to people talking, is this my skin? And then, and then go on that journey of discovery. I haven't used the um, dermal pen. I don't know why, but I always felt that taking off the fuzz lovely because you know, that sense of not having a beard anymore is beautiful. But I felt it was like shaving and I was just nervous. Even though in, the, in halfway through staying at home, I did shave here and shave here. And has it grown back a bit more? I've always had about six naughty hormonal dark hairs there and they haven't become 10. Um, you first used the mic needle, but I bought a one, is that okay? I, I would say that's too high, Chrissy. I really would. I just think that's crazy to start with one. Um, 
it's something you've got to do gently when you start, otherwise you will damage your skin and you'll scratch your skin. So I would just put it in a drawer and go and buy a 0 0.3 if you've never done it before. Um, what about dark circles under the eyes? Dark circles under the eyes are lots of things. They're tiredness, they are hereditary, they, I'm sorry to say, they are um, dependent on the color of your skin because people describe their dark circles very differently. So if you uh, have a black skin, your dark circle will just be a much, generally a much darker version of your black skin, dark, dark brown skin. If you have um, a sort of darkest caramel skins, you'll feel that contrast. Sometimes people um, who have a very dark caramel skin are the ones who come up to me and um, are upset the most by their dark circles. And that's where I d actually do see the most contrast. Um, and then you've got um, on the other scale, like a really white, white skin, alabastery, it will feel there's a blueness under. And then somebody like me, I feel there's a grayness under. So we all describe our under eye differently. So for some people, I would say, um, you know, I have people who come to Trinity London and they use, if they have that really like, like a, um, a darkest caramel skin, they'll use a just a touch and the BFFI and that combination works really well. Um, I think in terms of treatment, it's very, very difficult to treat under eye dark circles, but there's times when it's worse. And I do think what you eat has a little bit of an effect. I think dairy has an effect on bags more than dark circles. I think how many hours sleep you get has an effect. Um, and I think just, um, you know, for those people who feel the biggest contrast, getting a color corrector like NYX did a really good apricot color corrector, Becca did a good apricot color corrector and putting that on first and then putting on your concealer uh, can really help. Yeah. Um, greetings to Buse. I love Greece so much. I love Greece. I've got a red nose too and big paws, darling. Um, I think with a red nose, think about what you're eating. I mean, I know this sounds weird, but anyone who has redness on their skin, all right, let's just talk about redness on the skin because I think we've got, Hannah, this week, do we have, um, I think we have Julia Hunter's talk about sensitive skin. Do we have that this week or do we have it last week? But um, for the lady with the red nose, I'm just gonna say, consider what you're eating. I know it sounds weird, but I'm just gonna say to you, consider what you're eating. Um, when do we talk to Julia? Hang on, when do we talk to Julia here? And we were talking about melasma. So next week, we're talking about sensitive skin, which is really a good one. It can bring down the redness and large pores could be a little bit that you have to have an oily skin. It could be you're eating a lot of fatty foods. So there are contributing factors. On an aesthetic perspective, um, doing, you know, an exfoliating acid toner will really probably help reduce the pore size and the redness of your nose, I would recommend just a touch Trini London um, foundation concealer because it's just brilliant at covering everything. Um, best product for the beginning of a droopy wrinkly neck. How many of us on here think about our bloody neck? Um, I've done many different things for necks, but I, um, I think the neck is one of the hardest places to deal with. So therefore any people watching who are in their twenties and thirties, I'm gonna just throw it out there how important it is for you to look after your neck. If you're going in the sun, you'll think I'm in my twins, I'll still go in the sun a bit. Just cover your neck, just cover your neck. Just put fake tan on it. You know how much I hate fake tan. Cover your neck because sun damage on the neck kills that neck very quickly. The skin on your neck is very different than the skin on our face. So even though whatever you put here, you should put on your neck for sure, the thinness is different. It's not that plumpness we get here. So it can get slacker quicker. And there are various lasers that can help to make necks a little less slack. There's a few lasers, um, Ultra is one in the UK, which quite a little bit painful. There's one called Forma in the US, I think. And they can slightly tighten the um, muscle underneath, which can sort of slightly hold up. Some people have Botox in the neck. You can also consider just doing a bit of microneedling on the neck, I do do that. Um, neck creams, I think, are a waste of money. I've just found get a heavy moisturizer, put it on your neck. It's no different whatsoever. 
Um, and I do think tightening your neck, so doing my kind of A, E, I, O, O, U. I've done this 20 times, I'm not going to do it again, but these neck exercises that I do a bit do help a little bit. And my neck is, you know, I can feel that thinness around my neck, so I know how important it is for me to do this. I went to see this... Um, plastic surgeon once for an uh, interview. Just, um, I was doing an interview on, I can't remember what it was on. But he said to me, the only person he'd ever met who had an incredible neck was this woman in France. He was French, very um, chic, plastic surgeon. And he said she slept, I mean, no way are any of us gonna wanna be this vain, okay? But she slept every night like this. She never read in bed, sorry, can you see it? She never read in bed, so she was like this every night, pillows here. She never turned her neck. She never read in bed. She never watched the telly in bed. She was never on a computer because she probably didn't even know what they were. Anyway, immaculate neck. So you've got to compromise in life, but never that much for me, frankly. Um, so I'd say exercising. I'd say a bit of tiny micro needling. I'd say make sure you take all the products on your face down to your neck. Um, uh, okay. LED face mask. I find dermal rolling so painful, it's like torture. Um, make sure you're not doing it too hard. You know, you can just do gentle feathering. Now sat in the office, working listen to this and dermal rolling at the same time. Going to miss this when I'm in, where are you in? Where I'm in, in the office proper. Well, we can do it different times a day too. Um, can I microneedle my lips to encourage collagen? I do microneedle my lips. Now, it's a very, very delicate area. I don't want anyone out there microneedling their lips crazy. Oh. You have to really gentle. I cannot emphasize enough how gentle you've got to be at the beginning. Hannah, question, darling. Harvey has asked if you take any collagen supplements. I'm, I'm not sold on the concept of collagen supplements. There is one I like but it's not a supplement, it's a food supplement. But I generally feel, and I was put off because Dr. Seabag years ago, who does my Botox, said to me, Trini, sorry, he doesn't have such a regional accent. How is it going to get your epidermis this collagen? It has so far to travel, it goes in the tummy, it has to go through, it has to go through your bloodstream, it has to go outside, it's never gonna get there, we'll do nothing. Forget it, waste of money. And they have so much sugar. So that put me off, obviously, for a bit. And then I have this lovely woman, Vivian Tasman, who I haven't seen for ages, who does some very good powders. She does some collagen powders. And she bought out this platinum powder and it had marine collagen in it, really good, well-sourced marine collagen. But she put in this, and I put it in like a smoothie and I've run out. Uh, she put in tryptophan and tryptophan is what's in turkeys you know, but tryptophan is a kind of carrier. So she kind of figured out a way to carry the collagen like on a motorway to your skin. It's the only way I can describe it. Um, so Platinum Powder, Vivian Talisman, and it's a very, very good product. It reminds me, Hannah, will you remind me? I need to get some more because I love it. Yeah. And, and when I use it, my skin, especially my body skin, feels so much better because I think, you know, I'm not religiously every day remembering to put body lotion on but I do want to um I want to do it a bit more okay can I just say I haven't done any tools so I'm just going to do a tiny bit of tooling whilst we do the last few questions a good SPF there's many good SPFs out there I like um I haven't got my SPF drawer here I like what do I like I love SkinCeuticals their mineral one I like um Aven which you can get in boots I like La Roche-Posay um, any of them because they're great uh, and they're sort of medical. Um, I like um, Ultra Sun. I think it's called Ultra Sun. I always mix it up. There's one good one and a bad one, but the one with the blue and the white kind of wavy bit um, with the sun. Um, and I like Helio Care Agile. There's one of them. I use that um, all the time. SPF 50 is my favorite one. Uh, so, yeah, that's a few. Do you use Valerie Azilic Acid Serum to help redness and pigmentation, but as my skin is sensitive, it made it sore. How much were you using, darling? Just make sure one doesn't use too much. You could always introduce every other day. So don't go crazy um, and just see how you good. Um, exfoliative acting rosacea, that's very sensitive. 
Uh, yes, I would say there's, um, it, when you have acne rosacea, you have to be careful about microneedling. Um, I'd say some dermatologists actually do it professionally, but I think when you have acne, I'm sorry, when you have rosacea, there are things you can do to reduce your rosacea. And the thing really, most of all, is diet, I do believe. So really check it out, what you're eating and what you think might be stimulating your um, rosacea further. So I'm just using now the, in fact, I'm going to do dual-handed because I haven't got time. I've got to get ready today. Okay, Hannah, we'll do three more questions. Should you use day cream before applying BFS? Well, it depends on your skin. Um, I find in the summer I go from my serum to a BFF, and in the winter I probably put on um, moisturiser and then I put on my BFF. So it depends entirely on your skin. Keep going, Hannah, because I'm doing a machine now. So I'm doing face. Do you recommend any makeup remover that won't ruin eyelash extension? Um, I'd say a gel. You know, uh, Neutrogena. I mean, sorry, um, Neostrata have a really good gel cleanser. They have three different types, and I think because they have no oil in them, they'll be fine. Um, I'm just using right now the. New Face and the Face Gym Pro, and you asked me a lot which is a better one, and I just, I think they're both as good as each other. And my main difference, I would say, is that um, New Face has a travel version which is less expensive. So this and this are the same price, but the travel version, which is smaller, which works equally as well, is about um, £152 less. So if you're on a budget and you want to start the process of some sort of radio frequency, I mean sort of microcurrent, not radio frequency, then um, you can start on a f um, the new face mini. Um, next question, Hannah. Gladys has asked if you recommend hydrofacials. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're nice. I think just, you know, if you, if you can have a facial, it's a lovely thing to do. It just relaxes you. Um, and hydrofacials just use, you know, different techniques. But yeah, I like a hydrofacial, yeah. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Dermalogica products? Um, some I really like. I love their micro be not micro beads. They have a exfoliator like Indeed Labs have. It's a sort of, you know, it's they have a charcoal one, but like this sort of powdery. And I think it's great. Lila um, does use Clean Start, which is a range they do for um, sort of spotty skin. And I think that's great. So I, I have, I used to use their Power X sort of powder that turned into a very hydrating cream. It's a really odd thing. It came in a little booster and you plopped it on your skin. It looked like cocaine or something. And you rubbed it in and it became liquid. But whenever I was doing filming and it was halfway through the day, this um, makeup artist started using it. She put it under my eyes and it really refreshed my eyes. I must go and find that product again. I don't know if they still make it. Next. When in my routine should I be using my light therapy mask? I think it's sort of like when you've cleaned your skin and you've done your um, exfoliating acid toner, if you do one, or you've done a little essence or you've done a spritz, use it then. Don't use it with too much product on it. Um, don't use it with a kind of heavy serum underneath or a moisturiser. Yeah. And just, it's all about continual use. So I think if you can get to use it every other day, you're so going to see your collagen stimulated and you'll see a difference. Next one. What can we do to soothe irritated sensitive skin after a flare up? I think avoid foods that flare you up. Avoid, you know, a mixture of things like I'd avoid sugar, I'd avoid dairy a little bit. These things can flare up skin um, and then just have, you know, I think it's always good to have in your arsenal of skincare two or three products that really soothe skin. So one of them to me is Colloidal Silver, which is very sort of antibacterial and helps the sort of biome, microbiome of your skin. So you can just spray it. They have them in a health food store. I really like Colloidal Silver. Well, they have a gel actually, which is better. Um, and then I quite like, uh, I don't know if they have it actually, is that one here? There's a very good mask from SkinCeuticals for when your skin is having a flare-up. It would be amazing if this was here. Phytocorrective mask. 
Intense Calming. Yeah, this one. Phyto Corrective Mask from um, Skin Suticals. Intense Calming. It's a really good mask if your skin plays up. It's great. It's called Phyto Corrective, Phyto Corrective Mask. So just some kind of really calming product. Yes, next. Hannah was asked, what do you think about facial cupping? Um, what do I think about facial cupping? Um, yeah. Um, what do I think about facial cupping? I, my problem with cupping, I mean, I like cupping. We did some, this is a cellulite layer. Um, the lady who came to talk to us about cellulite on Instagram. Uh, she had these little cups and I remember somebody did facial cupping on me and I got really bad marks because I have this skin which is quite photosensitive. So like if I sleep at night and I have the sheet like this, I get really bad indents. So for me, I can't do it. But I think what it does is it brings the toxins to the fore. So I do think as a treatment, it's good, but you've got to make sure your skin doesn't mark. Um, Linda, could a dermatologist help reduce the appearance of an indent scar, big confidence issue? Um, Yes, Linda, I think that you can do certain lasers which will soften, but if it's a really deep indent, um, you'd have to go and speak to a dermatologist and see. I would say, in the meantime, buy Miracle Blur and just fill it in like putty every day. It really helps. I had a woman who burst into tears because I did her scar and it dis well, not disappeared, but it was just so less visible. How often would I use LED? You bought one seventy pounds not prepared to do 200 for one is a student teacher. Now they have a, now they have any benefits when the lower price one. I just don't know. I think that you get what you pay for in LED lights. I think you have to be careful. Um, I appreciate totally that you've got a budget for skincare. So I would say that um, not knowing the 70 pound mask, I can't tell you how well it works, but you have to be just careful that you didn't get it from some kind of, uh, you know, online Chinese, no, no uh, history of skincare. You know, like, like I would never buy a micro needle just from China online because I don't know if it's been sterilized properly. I don't know if it's been in a proper factory and been gone through, you know, a process. So I think with a mask, make sure, I hope it's a company that you know and rate, that's important. Um, but if it is, then just do it every couple of days. And you should, you know, if you've got enough LEDs on the mask, you should be able to see a difference. And it should just make your skin feel more stimulated and healthier looking. It's not like a lifting machine, you know, LED, but it's just gently regenerates the skin. Um, so you should, I hope, see a difference. Yeah. Um, last two questions. Last two questions. Um, as well as microneedling, do you have any sort of regime for your lips? Regime for the lips. Well, it's interesting lips because I find with my lips what probably, um, you know, people have different issues around my lips. So my lips are a little bit lined at the top. Um, they push out a bit. I had a lot of... Um, veneers put on and bonding so it pushed my mouth out a bit which is really helpful actually I had a very narrow set of teeth and very squint so I had about 15 years ago I had my bridge widened here and it just gave a bit more support to my lips but I do feel aware of um, those lines and occasionally I smoke, I smoke. Very occasionally um, but I think I believe, and I'm really trying it, of doing more stimulation to the lip and massaging the lip, you know? Like, even with the Hey You, doing this, like Katie Brindle, who's from, who invented these, showed me this technique, and she does it herself. And it's like pushing those lines away and stimulating the lip. So I do think you could try things like this and see. I'm do I've been doing it for the last week of really focusing on my lip and just getting, treating it with the same amount of care. And then at night I use Anna, which is our lip treatant, has hyaluronic acid and 
peptides in it and I put it on my lips at night quite thickly and I wake up in the morning and they feel really hydrated and, and well and now I exfoliate my lips whenever I do a proper granular exfoliator I always exfoliate my lips as well I don't buy a separate lip scrub I think they're a waste of money but I use the one I'm using on my face last question Hannah how long should I wait after applying retinol before I apply my other product um if you have a if you're using um you know tretinoin or um, a kind of prescription-based retinol, I think you really maybe need to make sure it sinks in before you put something else on. You could kind of wait five minutes or something. When you use other ones, like I use the Medicaid at the moment that I love, the, the one in the black bottle, and I remember speaking to the man, I said, do I need to wait? And he said, you don't, because we formulated it so it goes straight in. I still do, though. I still just wait a few minutes. I just want it to go in a little bit. Um, and then I put on peptides or a barrier for the evening. Um, I don't believe in the evening of putting a really heavy product on top of retinol, but you need hydration. So that's why I love a peptide serum because I feel it gives intense hydration, but it's not heavy. Because, you know, retinol creams can be quite thick. So that's my preferred way of doing it. Um, yes. So, um, last question. Do you have any methods or products to minimize the appearance of broken blood vessels on your face? Um, I think broken blood vessels are a little tricky because they're chillblains on your face, aren't they? And there are certain treatments you can do with a dermatologist where they will go in and they sort of inject, you know, a fluid in to get rid of them. But that's I've seen happen more on legs than, um, than on the face. Some people have a propensity to them and they, they're quite hereditary um, spider veins. So I think being more gentle with your skin, does it make fewer come? I'm not sure. I think um, it's really about a good concealer. I will have a little chat with a couple of people and just see, I'll tell you in the meantime, go to Alice Hart Davis, because she's so good, Alice Hart Davis. She has something called the Tweakments Guide and it's online. She's a really, really reputable beauty journalist. And she, you put in what it is. Sorry, I'm so hungry, I haven't had breakfast. And so she might put, so put in side of and see what she recommends, because she's great on that kind of further doctory stuff. Um, okay, I'm sorry I can't answer. There's so many more questions, I'm really sorry. Um, um, the Hey I is spelled, how's the Hey I tool spelled? Um, you wait 20 minutes with Tret. You see, people do have a ritual. I think 10 minutes is probably enough. But um, people have a ritual, what they feel is right for their skin and the time they have. Which bag is behind me? It's a white silvery one. Um, which one are you looking at? Oh, it's white. It's an older liar bag. Dry brushing is brilliant. I love it. Turns your body. It's fantastic. Um, so... Oh, well, we got through quite a lot. Um, I quite like doing it up here. I feel quite calm up here um, because I never think I'll have a bad, embarrassing moment. So we might do it more up here. I'm going to get all my things sorted, all the products sorted. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I just can't wash my face. That's the only thing. But then I get the water tap running. Um, it was so lovely for you to join me. Thank you very much. And I hope I managed to answer some of your questions. I know sometimes we have a repeat of questions, but I think there's you know, lots of different things. Nikki, I love the fact also, when you've asked a question, there's lots of people watching who might have a really good answer. So Nikki's saying you can laser veins in the face. So, um, you know, good to look at how people respond to you because there's some brilliant ladies and boys on here. Hi, boys. Um, and have a lovely day and we'll catch up soon.